everyone, how's it going? It's that nerd Ryan here, and today we're gonna kind of jump from the positivity to the critical negativity. Uh, so I always try to be positive about movies and stuff on this, even if I don't like the movie, um, unless I really don't like it, i.e. Ghostbusters 2016. But uh, I did kind of want to put in my two cents on what I feel is going wrong with Marvel right now. Um, so I'm going to address things that other people have brought up. I'm also going to bring up my own personal theory um, of why Marvel is kind of falling off and is honestly doomed to fail in the long run. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. First being um, that... Uh, or I'm sorry, that late sentence did not make any sense at first. So the first point is that Marvel is pumping out so much content. Uh, so this is the way that I was thinking about it when I had like a shower thought about this. So if we look back in 2012, to catch up to Phase 1 it would probably take a day. You only had six movies to watch um, and you'd be done. When Phase 2 finished up, you'd have probably a weekend that you'd just have to watch it. Phase 3, uh, if you wanted to catch everything up from Phase 1 to Phase 3, maybe a half a week, maybe a week, um, depending on your free time, maybe a little bit longer. But now, with Phase 4 finishing and starting into Phase 5, you have a whole month of content. Phase 4 released more content than Phase 1 and 2 put together. Um, so that is insane to think about on like the scale, because back then, in Phase 1, we'd only have two movies a year. Phase, three, uh, phase 4, we've had, I think, literally, in one year, five TV shows and three movies. So that's eight things of content, and I could be skipping over something right now, too. But that is a lot. And TV shows are a lot to take in. Luckily, most of the TV shows have been under 10 episodes, but still they're hour-long episodes. So for something like Moon Knight, it would take eight hours just to watch the entire show. For um, Phase 1, when it was just the movies, that's two hours to get one story done. So yeah, there's a lot of Marvel to take in now, um, especially if there's new people coming into it. It's going to turn a lot of people off. See, like, while I didn't really care for the DCEU, what was nice about it is it did only do about one, maybe two movies a year, and only ever had one TV show, which was Peacemaker. Um, so, yeah, it's nice that we don't have, for DCEU, you didn't have to really take forever to jump onto something. The biggest thing you had to do was watch a four-hour movie, and that's it. Um, for Marvel, if you want to get the full story, you have to spend a long time just to catch up. So I do feel that that is a major issue, and that's an issue that a lot of people bring up, especially people who haven't seen Marvel. Um, like, for example, my girlfriend has not seen every Marvel movie, but one of her big reasons why she doesn't want to get into it is because there is literally two shelves worth sitting right here of Marvel films, excluding the shows. Um... So that is, and there's many people that I talk to that say the same exact thing. The next issue is the quality. Um, and this is kind of going hand in hand with the releases. So, um, unfortunately, everything is seen as a business and a product nowadays. And also, the biggest thing with products, especially me being a toy collector, I see this all the time, companies only care about quantity over quality and the way that they care about this um, and what I mean by this is that they want to keep their buyer base in this case it's with movies hooked 
They want them to have the content with them constantly. The introduction with Disney Plus also incentivizes the customer to purchase Disney Plus to see these exclusive shows. Now, Star Wars is doing the same thing. A lot of things are doing the same thing with streaming services. I mean, HBO Max is like the hub for DC shows if we're looking at the other side of the coin. Or like Netflix with Wednesday and Stranger Things and stuff. Of course, everybody wants to get their audience hooked. Um, but also, with that, you need to have a constant introduction of the product. So, what I mean by quality over qu or quantity over quality is that they are making sure that you do not go a month without new Marvel content. Um, and unfortunately, that is showing in the quality of the script writing, the quality of the uh, effects, and just the quality of the movie in general. And what I was also thinking is kind of funny is if you look at any of the sequels or established characters in Phase 4, minus Spider-Man, uh, yeah, I could say that, minus Spider-Man and technically minus Wakanda Forever, although I consider Wakanda Forever its own standalone movie, not fully a sequel to Black Panther, for obvious reasons. But if you look at, like, Thor Love and Thunder, Ant-Man and the Wasp, um, Black Widow, those movies are very low in quality. It's almost like they're just trying to make it for the name, where you could, where somebody would be like, oh, um, there's a new Thor movie coming out. I like Thor. I know Thor. I'll go and see it. So that way, somebody can go and see a Thor movie, even though it's not that good. Obviously, there's outliers in this with um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, in Spider-Man No Way Home. But what I'm saying with this too is the original movies, such as what I consider is the original movie, Wakanda Forever, um, and Shang-Chi, Shang -Chi, sorry, are actually good movies. Obviously another outlier in that scenario is Eternals, but also Moon Knight, amazing quality. Um, Marvel is putting their chips into the new generation of characters and kind of putting no chips in established characters just for the fact that, oh, people are going to see Thor because it says Thor. People are going to see Black Widow because they know who Black Widow is. People are going to see Doctor Strange because they know what Doctor Strange is. People are going to watch WandaVision because they know who Wanda is. But when it goes to Shang-Chi and Moon Knight and Miss Marvel and stuff like that, okay, we need to put in more effort so people can like these characters. Uh, so I do see that coming. But now we're getting to the point that inspired me to make this video and is kind of going to predict the future for Marvel, in my opinion. There is one other thing, too, that I do want to add in quickly, and it's that Marvel is also leaning too much onto the villain side now with Kang, and now that's a big issue that we're not even going to get into in this, but leaning so hard onto one character instead of a ensemble is another big issue. But this is the main issue now. This is why Marvel doesn't feel the same, and why it is doomed to fail. So, if you look at characters like Captain America, Spider-Man, um, Iron Man, all the classic characters that we have in Marvel movies. They have been established in comics for decades. For example, Spider-Man's been around since the 60s, so has Iron Man. Captain America's been around for the for since the 40s. Captain America's almost 80 years old. Um, so, we've been stuck with Steve Rogers' Captain America for 80 years, for Peter Parker Spider-Man for 60 years. Tony Stark Iron Man for 60 years. Um, obviously, there's been points where those characters are out of the comics. For example, biggest biggest thing here is 2016, Civil War II, they kill off Iron Man and introduce Riri Williams, who was just introduced in Wakanda Forever. 
I thought the character of Riri was great. I'm excited for the Ironheart show. Um, I thought the actress was a good pick. Even though she wasn't my first pick for Riri Williams, I think she is a amazing pick for the character. However, what happened in 2017? Tony Stark reclaimed the mantle of Iron Man in the comics. Steve Rogers stopped being Captain America for a good while, then came back, and then became Captain Hydra, and then came back again, and is now Captain America again. Marvel Comics are cyclical. No matter how old you are, Captain America is Steve, Steve Rogers. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Even though Miles Morales is getting a lot of attention and everything with the Spider-Verse movies, the video game, everything, Peter Parker is always Spider-Man no matter how old you are. Steve Rogers, no matter how old you are, is Captain America. So that is the major issue that Marvel is facing now with Phase 4 and will be facing in the future um, and that is that they are too committed to this timeline to fully recast characters or bring back characters who the actors have moved on. So when we see Iron Man, we are not going to see Iron Man anymore probably. We'll see Ironheart, or we will see Rhodey taking up the mantle of Iron Man. And Don Cheadle is probably honestly getting close to being done. So we will probably never see Iron Man in the MCU anymore. Uh, yes, we could have Miles take over the mantle for Spider-Man for the MCU, but people are going to want Peter because Peter's been established in the MCU. Peter Parker's known in the Marvel Comics, so why can't we have Peter? Well, Tom Holland is done being Peter Parker. Obviously not right now, I'm saying in the future, but like, for example, Iron Man. I highly doubt Robert Downey Jr. will come back to play Iron Man. I would be impressed if he actually voice it, does like the AI voice in Ironheart, but even if he does that, I don't think Tony Stark will ever come back. And so the fan base is losing interest because we lost these major characters that are still active in the comics and will be active far past our lives. In Marvel movies, unfortunately, actors age. Marvel movies will never be able to stay like Marvel comics. And consumers will not feel the same way for these new legacy characters as they do for these older characters. Because of nostalgia, because of established characters, and just because of... Marvel taking a different direction with these new characters, which is what they should do because I don't want to see in Ironheart Riri Williams trapped by a terrorist group and then having to build her own suit and then having to fight a version of herself and then having to go through an existential crisis because she has shrapnel in her chest. I want to see Riri have her own story. But then again, people also who want to see characters have their own stories, will miss these classic stories. So yeah, that is what I think the major issue with Marvel is now. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment what you think below. Leave a like and subscribe and ring that bell. It's that Nerd Ryan signing.